Mm-hmm. From that sin, I need to I, get I agree. to I agree. an airport. Okay, well, you, until you tell me which airport, I'm going to be kind of lost yeah. as to giving you a... Yeah, I'm going to, I want to pile on here a little bit too, because one of the tricks here is that we've got to be able to, and we talk about this in our estimation class, you got to present this information. You have to have something backing up beast more than, oh my, just, I think. And so when you walk in there, you're going to say, here, here's our cone. We've plotted our cone over the last 12 projects. This is our cone. This is where we're at in our current funding. Here's our natural variation. We're not making this up, but we didn't pull it out of a hat. This is the data that backs it up. Here's our top 10 risk list. Here's where we've estimated the probability. Here's where we have estimated the severity. Here's where we calculated the risk exposure. Here's how we combine the risk exposures. A couple of different ways you can combine them. But generally, it's going to be some combination of the risk exposure to say, here's why we added this much, as Steve likes to call it, contingency to the plan just for risk, right? Because it's based upon the risk exposure, which we based upon the top 10 risk list, plus maybe a little bit of flavor. They flavoring for these 3,000 of the risks that aren't in our top 10, but have low enough probability and or low enough severity that we're, we're trying to directly manage. Right. And plus, here's the mitigations we're putting in place because we have a top 10 risk list, which actually is incurring more work on our part. This is the lovely part. Like, we're actually incurring more work to deal with these mitigations. Otherwise, the risk exposure would be even bigger <laughs> and we mean later. Right. But if you can't walk in and, and be willing to have that conversation and, and defend that because you're just guessing off the top of your head because you haven't done your kind of uncertainty or at least haven't even adopted one. Right. I mean, even adopting ones can be better than pretending it doesn't exist. Or you haven't done your risk list. Then, yeah, I think it's worth the business pushing back. And I tell my clients the business should be pushing back on you. They should be for asking it for faster and cheaper because that's what makes money. Right. And so if they're not trying to pressure you to go faster, they're not doing their job. Expect them to pressure you to do it faster and cheaper. That's what they're supposed to do. Your job is to get them information to make better business decisions, not cave in and go, oh yeah, we'll try to go faster, but, but to say, okay, no, here's the reality. I understand you want it faster. I want it faster and cheaper. We all want it faster and cheaper. That's not the question here. The question is, here's the information, the best data we have. Use it to make the best business decision you can. So yeah, making decisions my, by data is, ever, nobody would disagree with that, Earl. And there, and there are probably organizations that do that have adopted the co- their own cones, or they have a real good handle on their data. But there's also other ways of estimating, and many organizations will just use, I don't know, expert judgment. We go to, we go to Earl because you know Earl was pretty good the last three times we did these projects, and Earl's go- and Earl's going Earl's going to have the final say, right? Or whoever it is in the organization who is the guru, who's who's always done the projects, who's always done the estimates. And, and that's what we do. And that's not necessarily data-driven. That's, that's experiential-driven, but it still works, right? Uh, if it works. Not, not, yeah, if it works, because it <laughs> right. often If it's working, I would work. argue with you, yeah. <laughs> but it usually right. doesn't work. But if it's working, great. Love it. Um, because there's a tendency to go to the person who has the most favorable estimate <laughs> in spite of the one who has the most realistic estimate— so let's go to person X, whoever person X is, because they're always going to give me the most optimistic, most favorable estimate, even though this person over here, Earl, is actually more realistic. It's not as optimistic, <laughs> but it is more realistic. And um, no, at the end of the project, I mean, the, the most optimistic person said six months, Earl said uh, 10 months. Now, it actually took 10 months, but they're not going back to Earl saying, oh, I noticed, Earl, you were right. They'll keep going back to this person who said six months because they like the six months better than they like the 10 months. (laughs) Well, I'm just going to put in more confusion here is that initial projects estimated. 